What's up, Movement Masters? It's Sean Mishka, Movement Mastery and OptimizeMovement.com, coming to you with another quick tip. And today's quick tip is a huge hot topic in our industry and profession today because it impacts all movement specialists on a daily basis. You know that as movement specialists, whether you're a strength and conditioning coach, an athletic trainer, a physical therapist, a sport coach, what have you, you are entrusted with changing movement and changing movement for the better. What we know is, is it's intuitively obvious that what we say matters and so does how we say it. Now here's a couple things that we're going to talk about in regards to that very topic and that idea of saying the right thing at the right time. We're going to talk about the idea of internal versus external coaching cues. So you learn what to say, how to say it, in order to evoke or elicit the right change in the athlete's movement patterns. Now before we talk specifically in regards to the internal versus external factors and some of the benefits as well as shortcomings and limitations of each one, let's get a few things straight. First off, we know a couple things. We know that people have uh, very limited attention spans, correct? We also know that athletes and all people have very limited memory and retention times. And thirdly, we know that a lot of times we're not always on the right page or the same page with those individual people and athletes because we're talking at a different level of knowledge. So it might be going in one ear and right back out the other. Now we want to look for ways, of course, to be able to say the right thing at the right time to elicit the right change because what we're trying to do is we're trying to increase independence so the athlete can perform it the way we want to so we can back off in regards to the over-reliance of us in their life or in their sporting environment. We want to be able to increase retention as well as repeatability of that correct movement execution and technical skill. We're also trying to decrease reaction as well as processing time so they know what to do, when to do it. And all the while, with all of those things, we're trying to increase movement efficiency in the factors of the movement optimization model, the kinetics, the kinematics, and the kinesiological pattern. All in all, what we're trying to do is we're trying to essentially get that athlete to perform more close to optimal when, where, and how it matters, which is in the sport. So, this topic is huge. Now, just a couple of tidbits here in regards to what internal cues are versus what external cues are. First off, internal cues focus on the body or aspects and positions of the body, such as if we're going to uh, perform a vertical jump, we might tell that athlete to extend through the hips or the knees. And in an external coaching cue for that same vertical jump, then would be attack or explode against the ground or push the ground down. Or maybe if we're talking about a change of direction, maybe on a pro agility, we're going to have that athlete in the internal cueing tell that athlete to flex or bend through the hips as they come into that break or that cut with the weight on the inside foot or maybe something like that. Versus in the external cueing, we would tell that athlete to maybe get into a small shed or to slice in and slice out. So you can see that the internal cueing focuses more on the technical execution aspects and trying to get that athlete to truly feel and then acknowledge where their body is in space. Versus the external cues focuses more on using action words, slice in, slice out, explode, attack, those types of things in order to create context for the athlete to try and visualize what they're trying to do in the environment. So it, then it leads to certain benefits for each one, both the internal and external, both in my ex experience have benefits. Even though there would be some who kind of reside on one end of the, the spectrum or the other or draw that line firm and dark like I have on the board, but I don't believe it's that firm necessarily. Because I have found that internal cueing can work very, very well and can be provided to be very useful when we have to change ideas for that athlete in regards to where they're positioning their body in space. The technical compensations or the dysfunctions that we see that already exist or the problems that the athlete might have in positioning themselves correctly to perform biomechanically sound movement patterns. So I believe that it is very useful for very technically specific kinetic and kinematic factors. On the flip side, the external cueing 
is usually used for an immediate performance benefit or increase. And that really is what the research has found as well. We find that if all we're doing is looking at an outcome-based model, maybe we're looking at distance or speed or whatever it might be, and, and on the surface that all sounds fine and dandy, like, oh, Sean, we should just only use external cueing if we get immediate performance increase. Let me talk about a few limitations that might exist from that mentality and idea, but there are obviously going to be times and places to use that immediate performance increase such as when we're in the game setting or when we're testing or when we're really trying to the athlete has already attained a certain level of movement mastery and skill execution and now they just need to be able to put forth their best effort and have the best intention in order to attain that performance increase and performance outcome so what we find though is that it isn't so cut and dry as I already had mentioned because the internal cueing, in many cases, if you, if you can imagine with me, if you will, we're focusing in on aspects particularly of the kinematic sort. We're, so we're talking about where the joint orientations and the body is in space and time. It can often lead to overthinking if that athlete stays in that realm and they just continue to think about extending at the hip fully or driving their knee, uh, driving with their knee and doing certain things as far as like where their weight is balanced on their foot and so on and so forth. There's countless examples. So by focusing on the technical execution aspects, at least kinematically, sometimes that can lead to overthinking of the athlete if we never move on, as I'm going to propose later, to the external side. But on that flip side, if the athlete never has felt or can acknowledge or become aware of where his body is in space, we might have an immediate performance increase, but it could be being performed with technical compensations, such as if, if the athlete is focused in on a broad jump or a horizontal jump, on just getting the max amount of distance, but they might not be performing optimally. There might be technical compensations or dysfunctions that are occurring, such as their knees are going into extreme bulgus, or they might have external rotation or internal rotation or pronation when we don't need it, et cetera, et cetera. So we're actually, they're focusing in on getting the greatest performance benefit. And acutely, they would as well. But if we're talking about over time, longitudinally, they might actually be getting to a certain degree of uh, residual of that which they already know how to do. So that's where the performance outcome is coming from because they're just performing the best that they can in that moment in time, but there could still be compensations occurring. So we would have to go back to internal cues at that point in order to improve upon some of those technical aspects of the kinematic structure. So what we get to then is the million dollar question is which one is better? And I think too often times in our industry, in our profession, many experts, many smart individuals are residing on one side or the other when in fact, in many cases, like with most things in our profession, is the answer of which one is better is, is it depends. We need to use the right one at the right time and at the right place for changing the correct problem or giving the right remedy to the right problem, the right solution here. Okay, so that depends on a number of things. It depends on the athlete's understanding of what it is that we're being um, asking of him or her to do, what it is that we're advising. It depends on individual differences in the athlete's intention as well as their attention, okay, in that ability of that which they have in order to really put their mind in the muscle, so to say, or their mind in the body. It also depends on the individual factors at hand that may be detracting from that displayed character from the displayed characteristics of their movement optimization model. So the kinetics, the kinematics, or the kinesiological patterning. Finding out where the problem is and determining exactly what it stemmed from or what might be occurring could be what's going to determine which one is better, internal or external, for that particular situation. Because what I have per personally witnessed is, is in many cases, if the athlete is raw at a particular movement, pattern, skill, action, behavior, we should start with using internal cueing to ensure that we're getting the right kinematic structure because the athlete isn't going to perform at a high enough uh, basis in order to get their optimal display regardless. And then gradually, once they move up in level of mastery, we would then move to external cueing because then they can start to once they dis 
display a certain degree of movement competency from a kinematic structure standpoint, we can then entrust that athlete in order to perform at a higher level with less and less compensation and dysfunction. And then if there's little things that start to rear their ugly head again, even as that athlete moves up into another level of expertise and mastery, we may have to revert back to the internal cueing now that that athlete has felt and understands where it is that he or she is in space and time in the environment. And then finally, once we can entrust that athlete and has become more automated, we would go back to only external cueing. So I have found a progression from internal to external to internal to external in kind of that four stage process as an athlete moves from a conscious incompetence standpoint to a very involuntary, unconscious, competent place. So what we find then is this million dollar question of which one is better is it depends and I believe that there's a time and a place for both overall. All in all, what we have to do and what we have to be conscious and kindness enough as movement specialists is we must create visual as well as kinesthetic context in both the brain as well as down into the movement pattern in the actual technical execution display. So ultimately we can get the ultimate movement performance outcome maximum, but also that it's being performed in the most optimal display of the actual biodynamic structure of that movement skill. So hopefully this helped add some clarity in, in regards to the idea of internal versus external coaching cues because I think it's a huge topic and it's one for you to definitely explore depending on where your level of mastery of athlete is residing and what it is that he or she needs to change. So for Sean Michigan, Movement Mastery, this has been another quick tip. Uh, Till next time, Movement Masters, let's go out and get it, and let's all continue to master the art of optimizing movement.